Welcome to 5 and 5 from the One Stop Co-op Shop, where we discuss five key elements of a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today we're looking at Aquacorn Co. from Renegade Games. A disclaimer that I was sent a review copy of this game. Aquacorn Cove is a co-op game for two to four players based on a graphic novel by the same name. In the game, you try to strike a delicate balance between building and feeding your village and protecting the coral reef that's key to your survival. But do environmental themes make for good gameplay? Let's find out and get to the list. My number five is going to focus squarely on that environmental theme, and for me this was a big pro. Aquacorn Cove is a pretty accessible, quick-to-learn game, so I played it not only solo and with my wife, but also with my seven-year-old son. The game was fun for him, but the fact that it got him asking questions about coral reefs and how they affect storms and overfishing and pollution was really a great thing. The game tackles weighty, important environmental issues in a way that never feels heavy-handed, but is also very thematically brought to life, and I really appreciated that. But my number four is a bit of a mix, and that's how the game ends and is scored. There is no strict win-loss condition here. You will always continue playing. Your village can never be completely destroyed. Instead, at the end of the game, you compare both your village's prosperity and the general reef health to some charts and read about how you did. Now, on the negative side, this might not feel entirely fulfilling, especially for hardcore gamers, because you don't really have a set thing to aim for. It's kind of more like score-based victory. But for casual gaming, like with my son, he really liked the fact that we couldn't lose, and he also liked that the ending gave him something to strive for. Oh, we didn't quite build up our town much this game, but next time we can really make it sing. And that general idea goes right into my number three, a pro, and that's how the game models survival, like in Robinson Crusoe or similar games, but in a really friendly, low-key way. Yes, like many survival games, you are striving with all your might to get enough food to feed your population. But if you aren't able to, nobody dies in this game. They just move away to seek other opportunities. And when they leave, your village's prosperity goes down, but that actually makes it easier to feed everybody. So you still have the tension and strategy of trying to take care of your village as optimally as possible, but it's done in a more friendly, accessible way, which again might not appear to hardcore gamers, but that's not the target audience for this game. We have another mix at number two, although it leans pro, and that's the core action selection mechanic of the game. Each season of the game plays out in seven phases, all listed at the bottom of the board, and players choose action cards from a three-card hand to happen during one of the phases, affecting the village in some way. But in a really clever design move, basically everything else in the game uses these same phases. You draw an event card at the beginning of the turn that could help or hurt you, and it goes into one of the phase slots. Similarly, if you rescue an aquacore and one of these mystical creatures in the game, then they give you a bonus card that also goes into a slot. It keeps things really nice and organized and makes the seasons flow extremely quickly. And I should also say the core action selection is quite tough. A lot of the actions require you to place pollution, which is actively bad, but they give you more powerful effects for doing so. Now the potentially negative side of this is that the action card mechanic, and the next thing I'll talk about in number one, is basically all you do in the game to actually affect the game state. So again, things are very casual here. You have a three card hand, some of the cards might have a choice of which action phase you go into. But that's your core decision each season, and there's only seven seasons the entire game, so it might feel a little too light for some gamers. And we get into a final mix with number one, but again one that leans really pro for me, and that's the fishing mechanic. As I already said, a lot of the tension in the game comes from trying to feed your village, and one of the main ways you do that since you're a fishing village is dig into this fishing bag and draw out fish to put on your boat. And this is a delicious push-your-luck mechanic in so many ways. First of all, pollution tiles from the bay can end up in the bag, and if you draw them, you actively damage the reef, which can be terrible. But on the other side of the coin, aquacorn tiles that you rescue go into the bag, and if you draw them, you get a special aquacorn card as they help you. But the best part of the push-your-luck is the idea of overfishing, which again goes back to the number five in the environmental theme integration. You can keep going for more and more fish, and for each individual fish type you fish, they go back in the bag. But if you get more than one tile of the same type of fish, all those extra tiles are removed from the game forever. So if you get greedy in a desperate bid to feed your villagers, you can wipe out a whole portion of the bay's ecosystem and leave yourself in more dire straits in the future. It's a really tense player choice, but again, also incredibly thematic. Now the negative side here, and it might not bother too many people, is the randomness. If you have really bad luck and get a ton of pollution or all the empty nets or just keep on getting the same fish type, you could be in a really bad way through no fault of your own. It's a minor complaint, but one I want you to be aware of. Overall, for casual gaming with my wife or my son or even solo sometimes, I think Aquacorn Cove is wonderful. 
I love how this theme is brought to life, the push your luck mechanic of the fishing, the smooth integration of the phases in your action selection, and the fact that the graphic novel the game is based on is really lovely too and my son and I could read it together after we played the game is a nice bonus. But you might want to avoid this game if you're looking for something heavier because again it's really light, if you don't like the randomness of the fish draw, or if you just want a ton of tough choices every round because as I said the game is pretty light and pretty quick to play and you don't do a whole bunch sometimes. But for anyone who thinks they might get into some casual gaming with their family, Aquacorn Cove gets my full recommendation. Good gaming everyone and I'll see you at the next stop.